All right, good evening to all participants. Thank you for attending this event. Please let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dian Permanasari from Samrije. Currently, I am the program chairperson for SPE Java Indonesia section. And with me, uh, I have our hardworking officers in the background, Mas Valen, Mas Handika, and also Mbak Anissa, who are responsible to deliver distinguished lecturer and technical discussion group series to disseminate the nah, knowledge komati. from our speakers, uh, from our experts to all our members. So previously, we have uh, we already had a couple of sessions on transformation and digitalization topic in the oil and gas industry. So today uh, we are back, uh, and we will have the first uh, TBG session of the fracturing series. Uh, so the first session will be presented by our esteemed speaker, uh, Mas Ariando Makmun, or we normally call Mas Yando from the commissary board member of Pertamina Hulu Energy. As the moderator, we have the pleasure of having Mas Mario Andre Yoga Sugama from Pertamina Hulu Rokan. So before we hand over to Mas Mario to introduce the speaker, um, let me see if um, our membership section has arrived. But Fanya, can you please check if Mas, uh, Mas Ori or Mbak Jesse is available? Oh, not yet, Mbak Dian. Okay. Okay, then we'll just skip the membership presentation and then uh, I'll go to the agenda first. So uh, we will start with the uh, speaker introduction later on from the moderator and a little bit of the abstract. And then we'll hand over to the Masiando to start the presentation. Approximately forty to sixty minutes. We'll we'll see. Uh, and then before the Q and A session, we will have a photo session. So please prepare your camera uh, ready to go uh, during the photo session. We'll we'll document. Um, and then we'll continue with the Q and A session, which will be moderated by Mas Mario. Okay. And then we will close uh, later on after afterwards. Okay, so since the membership team is not here, we'll just skip this. And then I'll hand over to you, Mas Mario, uh, to introduce Mas Yando. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mbak Dian. Um, do you hear my voice clearly? No? Yes. All right, okay. <laughs> So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mas and Mbak semua, terima kasih. And uh, thank you very much for the SPE committee for allow me to be here in this one of the most prestigious um, sharing session, I guess, with Mas Ariano Makmun. So again, uh, in, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mario, or you can call me Mai. I'm currently working in the uh, Pertamina Hulurokan. And um, I'm going to be the today's moderator for the technical discussion group. And today's topic, yeah, uh, as being introduced earlier by Mbak Dian, it's very, very interesting one. And perhaps, yeah, the first one of many series related with the unconventional reservoir development. And tonight, especially related with the fracturing. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that under many studies and in, from institutions in Indonesia, the total prospective shale gas reservoir in Sumatra Island reaching more than 233 trillion cubic feet? these enormous resources is yet to be extracted and developed. And therefore comes horizontal well and also hydraulic fracturing. It has become essential another for unconventional reservoir development. From tight gas oil and gas producing cell and coal bed methane, all the resources rely on hydraulic fracturing for its commercial viability. Seru banget pasti ya. And we also like to inform you, just like previously introduced my Badian, there's going to be three door prizes for uh, three best questions during the Q&A sessions. And as you already know, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's speaker is one of the real legend in Indonesia, especially because he is already having more than 25 years experience in the domain of stimulation and fracturing, in which 15 years of it was assigned in the international experience, such as namely in Europe, Middle East, Asia, Mediterranean, North America, and offshore of South China Sea. 
With his depth understanding in skills in oil and gas production concepts, metric oxidizing for sandstone, carbonate, sand control, propane factoring in various location and reservoir environments, he already completed more than 2,000 fracturing treatments and involved in many production and stimulation study and projects for many big operators. As he currently sits as one of the committee member of the Pertamina Board of Commissary, he gives many, many feedbacks, technical advices, and pushing Pertamina's journey, well, at least in Pertamina Hulurokan that I experienced it myself, embarks in the unconventional reservoir development. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Indonesia Unconventional, One Inch Closer to Happen. Let's give a virtual round of applause to Mas Ariando Magman. Mas Ariando, time is yours. Thank you, my. Let me share my screen. Not yet, Mas Ariando. Okay. So Let's everybody see. have my screen. Very yes. good. All right. Everybody, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. How many people we have here? 51. Very good. All right. So uh, uh, I'll have, uh, I will introduce myself real quick. Uh, but I think May has already covered everything that uh, I've been through. Uh, first of all, I thank you uh, for SPE Java for the invitation for me to present tonight. Uh, thank you to uh, Budian, uh, Pak Mario, uh, the Chairman, Pak Medi. So uh, pleasure to be here. And tonight, I may have some uh, difficulties with the uh, Wi-Fi, and pardon me for that. But I hope as far uh, as much as I can, uh, I'll present the slides. And then, if somehow I lost connection. Somebody please uh, help me with uh, maybe WhatsApp me or uh, call call my number, call my mobile. Okay. All right, Indonesia unconventional, one inch closer to happen. Let me uh, continue. This is myself. Uh, I am uh, I graduated from uh, petroleum engineering ITB 1991. I joined Slum BJ 97, and then may already explain. I spent 25 years uh, where uh, 16 years uh, I was abroad, uh, sailing over uh, eight, con nine countries of assignment. I returned back home to Jakarta on uh, 2015 and uh, still with Slambaji for a couple of years. Uh, and for the last two years, uh, I'm with uh, Pertamina, uh, working as a committee member or staff ahli. Uh, for Pertamina's uh, BOC, Board of uh, Commissioner. All right, guys. So uh, before we talk about uh, unconventional and then uh, talk about shale gas, shale oil that happened in US, all those uh, good stuff, let me start to uh, this presentation with the basic of fracturing. Apologize to uh, everybody that understand already fracture, uh, hear about conductivity most of the time, FCD and all those uh, good stuff, but uh, still I have to touch base uh, the basic of fracturing so then people understand what's the difference between conventional and unconventional uh, fracturing. Why people frack? People frack for money, for additional money, additional revenue, a profit, knowing that uh, we can sell the oil and then the, the only way to uh, to sell the oil is to bring it up from the underground to the surface right and stimulation is one of the way uh, to uh, to uh, have hydrocarbon uh, deliver from reservoir to the perforation to the well board travel up to the wellhead and then goes to the uh, to the plant Stimulation is divided into three categories. Number one is well bore clean up. The fluid is not injected into formation. Uh, I mean, before we uh, talk about all this low permeability, high pressure, HPHT, and all those uh, technical jargon, 
maybe our well bore is uh, uh, is dirty, dirty with the wax, with the asphalt in, dirty with the, maybe the perforation is covered with the sand, sanding uh, formation, sanding issue. So before we go beyond what we cannot see, let's clean up and check our well board. Let's run something to the well board, check top of sand, make sure your uh, perforation is clean, make sure your tubing ID is still uh, as uh, like before we, uh, we bring it down to the well. And if it is dirty, if it is covered with something, let's clean it up, right? And the well board cleanup is usually pumped like one and a half times of that well board volume. Just to check, may uh, are you guys still with me, or I'm still yes. with you guys? Yes, right, Mas Yandu. Right. Okay, continue with the second type of stimulation is matrix treatment, and most of the time people refer this matrix treatment as a stimulation. What I mean is, some people think that hey, uh, let's do stimulation. Why why do we have to frack? Let's do stimulation. Well, simulation is actually the, the acid acidizing, which is matrix treatment, is part of stimulation. But people usually refer stimulation to the matrix treatment and to be specific most of the time to the to the acidizing, right? And matrix treatment is covered, is a small volume, covered like the penetration, uh, maybe five to a maximum 10 feet from the well bore, and we inject below frac pressure, right? A, uh, what time should I stop, uh, uh, May? Or Dian? Um, you can stop at 8.15, Mas, and then right, we'll continue perfect. with Q&A. All right, cool. Okay, so then uh, <clears throat> continue with the matrix treatment. is an injection below frac pressure, and uh, most of the time, many, many times, uh, the volume is small because radius of penetration is only five to 10 feet from the well bore. It's actually target the critical well bore radius. Then uh, the third types, which we will talk about tonight, uh, is hydraulic fracturing. Hydraulic fracturing is injection above frac pressure. So we inject the fluid. That's why, that's why it's called hydro, hydra, right? So hydraulic fracturing, we inject fluid above frac pressure. We make sure that the rock is parted and then we do something to the parted rock. Either we put acid and we call it acid frac or we put propan and we call it propan frac or sand frac, okay? And with this negative skin is possible. And I'm not sure if uh, you guys, uh, I don't know what's the deal with the, with the, what's the rule of asking question. Uh, let me check. Okay. So, yeah, Masiando, I'm going to look at the um, column section. So everybody, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat box or maybe raise okay. your hand later. Uh, perhaps we can finish up your presentation first, Masiando, then we can open up the Q&A session. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is reservoir quality versus stimulation type. This is, uh, you know, if you go to uh, many uh, uh, fracturing presentation or stimulation presentation, you will see this uh, uh, slide. So divide your, uh, your reservoir is uh, defined in this, in this slide as a porosity and permeability relationship. Okay. Uh, the lower the, the low permeability correlate with the low uh, porosity, right? Because porosity is the volume and permeability is the flow. Okay. Now, when you have a small volume, the flow is expected to be low. Okay. While the high porosity is eventually uh, represent the high permeability. When you deal with the high permeability, then you have a matrix uh, stimulation. You can do matrix stimulation. And when your permeability is between, in this case, 0 0.1 to 10, is still considered high. It's not super high, but high. And then what you can do is uh, stimulation with the TSO fracturing. Then move to the left. When we go to less permeability, anything between 0 0.01 to 1, then you will do a very long propan fracturing. 
is a long half length. XF is a half length. Okay. Last but not least is the marginal economic. However, this marginal economy with the ultra low permeability is the one that brings US with his with their shale gas and shale oil to be independent states of uh, uh, oil and gas uh, import. All right, let me continue with the next slides. And this is the shale gas boom. Now, candidate selection. All right. Uh, I will be, uh, I will slow down here. I, I want to make sure that everybody understand uh, the concept of uh, candidate selection when it comes to stimulation and production. When you have a well, okay, you have a well uh, with the low production and you are thinking that, hey, let me do something to this well. Let me, uh, let me do a simulation. Let, uh, I want to find a way how to improve this production. So first of all, we need to look at what types of rock that we have uh, in the ground, on the ground. First, let's divide into these three simple rocks. The first one is carbonate, second one is sandstone, and the third one is shell. We will talk about shell later, that's why I don't put it here, right? Because that's the topic night, unconventional. Now, when you have a carbonate well, carbonate is, uh, is a, a rock, a material formed from uh, a long time ago, uh, human uh, plants and uh, animal, right? And they uh, they uh, react with the acid, right? When you have a carbonate of a low perm and high perm, first let's discuss a carbonate low perm. Okay, logically speaking, knowing that this rock will react with the skin and uh, with the acid, then you may think of, hey, let's do acid fracturing, right? And you can do acid fracturing indeed. And then the second one you can do is a propane fracturing. You still can do propane fracturing as well. So there are two types of stimulation you can do, acid frac or propane fracturing for low foam. Now, depending on the solubility of the well and uh, how the well is behaved, uh, i.e., you want to break down the rock, but then uh, if the rock is uh, high pressure, then it's, it could be a challenge for you to pump up propane fracturing because when you pump up propane fracturing, then there will be some friction coming along with your uh, uh, execution. So then in that case, particular case, you can do acid frac. People also do acid frac when they are solubility. Solubility is the reaction between your uh, uh, unit of material rocks with the acid. When your solubility is anything between 70%, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Pertamina use 70-80% or others use 80% uh, and above, then you can do acid, acid fracturing because if you pump something that don't react, then uh, then you're not gonna get anything uh, stimulated down there. Okay, that's low pump. You go to the high pump carbonates. <clears throat> let's put it easy. Let's do metric acidizing. Small volume, 250 gallon per foot. Okay, and that can cover up to 15 feet radius in the normal porosity. Right. All right. So we finish with the carbonate. That's let's move to sandstone. Low permeability is only one. Uh, a single solution, which is propane fracturing. Okay, and when you deal with the high permeability, you can do metric acidizing or propane fracturing at the same time. So, what's the difference between high perm sandstone acidizing and high perm carbonate acidizing, for example? In carbonate, you are using simple acid HCl, while in the sandstone, you are using mud acid. Mud acid is a combination between HF and HCl. All right, guys, uh, again, I remind you, if you have any question, uh, put it into a chat uh, box and pa Mario will let her uh, read it uh, after my presentation. That's the uh, rule of uh, presentation tonight. All right, it's a very busy slide. Okay, on the very left, this is uh, how, how we connect the things between fracturing and production, oil, oil and gas production. One minute. 
Okay, so uh, the production in uh, oil and gas uh, business is represented with the, what we call Darcy law. Darcy law is this uh, equation number one. The Q of oil, the rate of oil, is equal to KH times reservoir pressure minus PWF divided by mu, which is viscosity, uh, times BO, formation volume factor, ln RE or, or W plus skin. All right. Now the skin is a damage. If your skin is positive, your Q here will be low. The, your oil production, gas production will be low. If your skin here, the S is uh, positive. Okay. You guys see my cursor, right? I assume. Yes, Mas. All right. Very good. So skin in the frag business is a function of what we call dimensionless fracture conductivity or FCD. FCD is equal to width of the frag multiply with the propon permeability and you divide by with the half length which is the propagation of your fracturing fracture multiply with the formation permeability so fracture width this is the width everybody let me just open this box so look at at the right corner bottom right corner so this is the width of the frag and this is the length Okay, length. Let me just. I should have the pointer. Uh, laser. All right. Okay. So this is the width, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the length, right? So the width is I put it here, and the length I put it at the bottom of the equation. The width. Okay. The width multiplied with the proper permeability is what we call frac conductivity, right? Divided by frac half length times reservoir permeability. So the 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 upper part of the equation is what uh, fracturing representative, and the bottom part is reservoir representative. Of course, the upper part has to be higher than the lower part, right? Like uh, like if this is the tall way, jalan tall on the upper part. And this uh, bottom one is jalan-jalan yang masuk ke tol, right? Uh, supply road. If your supply road produce more car, uh, uh, allow more car to uh, more car to come, then what the uh, highway can uh, accommodate? Then of course there'll be a traffic jam, and that is why your tall highway has to be a uh, bigger, higher, accommodate, able to accommodate more car than the supply road is. Okay, so that is the FCD. Now we you you have a production based on uh, uh, depend on skin. Skin depend on FCD dimensionless fracture conductivity, and the relation between FCD and the skin is here on the left top plot, right? The bottom part is FCD. So if you have a FCD of let's say ten. Right, and the skin, your skin is dropped to very low, right? So, you know, uh, comparison between skin of uh, FCD of 0 0.1 and FCD of 10, if your FCD is 0 0.1, meaning that the, the weight is low, propon permeability is low, then your skin is still high, okay? But if your FCD is progressing, uh, to a higher number, then your skin will drop. What happens when your skin is dropped, then your uh, uh, Q production will increase, all right? All right, don't worry. That's uh, the last question uh, equation that we have in this presentation, okay? Uh, the next will be common operation, common slide. Just, okay, let's try it. So what is unconventional? Unconventional is something not conventional, of course. In this case, that we will talk about is a shell, either shell gas or shell oil, right? So what's differentiate between unconventional and conventional? 
in unconventional is a very ultra low permeability. Your permeability is so low that the well, though it's high pressure, will not able to uh, flow any hydrocarbon uh, through its media. So to be able to produce, the very first part is to be able to produce. The second one is economically on unconventional, then we will need what we call horizontal well and also multi-stage hydraulic fracturing. Okay. When you do her, uh, uh, unconventional, you cannot just dream, hey, uh, let's do a, let's, uh, let's uh, drill a vertical well. Maybe we are lucky. You, you, you really, you will not be able to have that lucky, right? On unconventional drilling vertical well. So then, oh, you know what? Let's do the horizontal well. We don't have to spend all the uh, lots of money for wait for the uh, uh, hydraulic fracturing. No, as well. You can drill horizontal well as long as you want, as long as you can. But then, if you don't do a, a multi-stage hydraulic fracturing, then you will not be able to uh, produce uh, take the hydrocarbon out from the reservoir, right? Now all this unconventional stimulation will be will depend on stimulated reservoir volume, stimulated reservoir volumes, and as well azimuth of the minimum horizontal stress because the frag direction will go against uh, perpendicular to the minimum horizontal stress. And last but not least is the young modulus. Young modulus is the rock process. I'm sorry. Uh, let me just. I'll be back. So young modulus is the rock properties that uh, define the brittleness of the ductiles of the rock. Uh, I will talk about this in the next following slides. Okay. Wait. So this is the definition of MNK, MNK unconventional. In Indonesia, we call it MNK, Migas Non-Conventional Site Reservoir, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you some time to read it, okay? So Migas Non-Conventional MNK or Site Reservoir adalah hidrokarbon yang terbentuk dan terkekang pada batuan reservoir plastik berbutir halus dan berpermeabilitas rendah di dalam zona kematangan yang hanya ekonomis apabila diproduksikan melalui pengeboran horizontal dengan menggunakan teknik stimulasi hydraulic fracturing. So long time ago, uh, people still people at the at the government level still define that the uh, unconventional has to be the source, the source rock has to be the kitchen. Okay, but then later on they adopt what the SP SPE paper is uh, uh, defined as unconventional, and it's a simple two words: horizontal well and hydraulic fracturing. It can be shale, it can be shale oil, shale gas, it can be tight carbonate, tight sandstone, as long as you need horizontal well and hydraulic fracturing to produce it economically. We call it uh, MNK, uh, MNK. Migas non-conventional, right? Let me continue. Now, talk about conventional and conventional. Look at this triangle here. So we already have passed this high to medium quality reservoir. It's uh, very rare in this world as of today to find a good high medium quality and easy money. We go down to low permeability, tight gas sand, maybe uh, a couple of years ago. We are now here in the shale gas and shale oil, where the permeability is ultra low. What's the complication of this uh, triangle? When you go deeper to the more difficult reservoir, the price to develop that uh, uh, asset will increase eventually. Not only the price increase, also the technology required will be more complicated. Lots of R&D needs to be done. It has to be improved. Otherwise, either you are not able or it's uh, it's impossible, right? 
So the top part is conventional, easy money, it's gone most of the time. The bottom part is unconventional, something that requires efforts and uh, investment. All right, so this is the plot of US unconventional uh, history. 2007, this is where it starts, the orange part, which is Barnett Shell. You know, you go to the SPE paper shell, or you go to Google, you type shell gas, shell oil history, Barnett will be on top of it, 2007. I was in Oman at that time. If I'm not mistaken, wait, uh, 2000, yeah, I guess. No, 2007, I forget. Let me go back real quick, guys. So uh, I just curious. 2007, where I at? Where I was? 2005. I was in 2007, 2010. Okay, good. So I remember at that time, 2007, 2010, the oil prices dropped. Okay, oil prices drop, and then everybody's lots of uh, uh, oil worker laid off, but not the guys that frack and has uh, uh, knowledge of factory and as well on the unconventional, because Barnett just started on 2007. Look at Barnett here start on 2009 and 2010. In fact, it's 2010. Okay, lots of play coming into the picture as well. We have Eagleford coming, uh, Hainesville, Marcellus, Permian, and Utica. So uh, aggressive on Hainesville until 2013, and Hainesville is still on. Okay. However, Marcellus is really the winner, the number one. The they continue uh, the field, the play is continue to grow, right? Big volumes and as well on the Permian Basin. Okay, and this is the plot of a, a, a billion uh, a standard cubic feet of gas production in US, right? Okay, guys, so uh, again, this is uh, what Unconventional has done and on 2017 uh, is all pick up, right? And this is what release US from the depend dependent on oil and gas uh, import from outside, okay? That's becoming uh, independent country and they can, they can have enough uh, fuel, oil and gas for the home uh, because of this shale gas, uh, shale gas and shale oil revolution. All right, so we know about shale, it's low permeability. We know we have to drill horizontal well. We know that we have to frack it. We know that in US it's been uh, popular and uh, uh, fantastic. How about Indonesia? So in Indonesia, a couple uh, uh, study has been done, right? And the slides is a public, right? I try to be, uh, though I have all the good number, uh, but I try to uh, to be uh, to put anything that you can access. So in the slides, you have all this link uh, where I get the slide is all right. The picture is so total resources, speculative resources is up to 500, and this is the play. So we have a North Sumatra basin, North uh, basin, which we have Bau, uh, Belumai. And we also have a central basin in Rokan, which we have uh, what we call uh, uh, brown shale. And we also have South Sumatra basin, which we have uh, Talaka formation in many parts. And uh, two more. And of course, a few more here on the Java, we have two deposits and then also in Kalimantan. Okay, in Kalimantan, we have one, two, three, uh, four, five deposit. And on the very right of uh, Indonesia in the Papua, we have that one as well. And the breakdown, as you can see, most of the uh, accumulation happened in Sumatra, uh, speculatively, and also in Kalimantan, right? That's the big part. All right, let me continue.
Now I talk about Young Modulus. I mean, uh, we have we know uh, US successful and we know Indonesia uh, is uh, is coming. But what's the differentiate between uh, US and Indonesia is what we call Young Modulus. Young Modulus come to a terms that if you deal with uh, if you want to learn about uh, unconventional, you will hear about what terminology called brittleness and ductile. Okay, so the, the the harder the material, the higher the brittleness, and they put it as a brittleness index. Brittleness index. Okay. This is like a glass, right? If you throw a glass with a stone, the glass will shatter, right? Okay. It's broken and it shatter, and then uh, that's the high uh, brittleness material when compared with a uh, soft material like a pillow. You throw a, a, a stone to a pillow. And the pillow will not uh, shatter, will not be broken, but just uh, it just uh, take that stone and then uh, change the form and then return back to its original state. Okay. So the higher the young modulus, the higher the brittleness, it's a better for fracturing because why? Because then the width that you created with the frac can sustain over the production lifetime. Okay. Now, if you look at the young modulus here, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it here. The young modulus here, the young modulus. This is the elasticity of the rock. Okay, the elasticity, plasticity of the rock. Okay. For the metal is, for the metal is 10 million psi. One minute, we have some leak here. Maybe Panitia can take a look. So metal is 10 million PSI. Now look at this uh, arrangement here. This is the value of Young Modulus in the box at the bottom. We have 0 0.2 million PSI, 0 0.5 million PSI, 1.5 million PSI, 2, 3, 10, and 14. The 10 million PSI is this aluminum, right? That is the 10 million PSI, aluminum. And then the 3 million PSI is a shell rock in US. Is a hard rock, right? Hard rock cave. So it's a hard rock in US. It's a 3 million PSI. That's the rock in US. Coming down to uh, Indonesia, we have some formation with 2 million PSI. For example, Talang Akar formation is a 2 million PSI, one of the unconventional in some part of the Sumatra. Coming down again, we have Talisa in Kaji. Uh, million psi coming down again we have talisa in uh semoga and also in Wikarokan, kota batak half million psi and duri as the softest rock has 0 0.2 million psi so when we talk about rock our reference to call something hard rock is the us which is 3 million psi this is the heinous field okay other than Hannah's field, something like Barnett, Marcellus, and the rest of a play, most of the time is anything between four to five million PSI. Okay. So we are lucky. Here in Indonesia, we still have this. Okay. We still have a formation with one and a half and two. When it comes down to 0 0.5, it's pretty much it's quite hard to stimulate. Right. Guys, so again, back, we talk about all the stuff on rock qualities, on uh, area, Indonesia and US. Now let's talk about computation. Okay, computation wise, why we have to drill it horizontal? Because one horizontal well, if you drill a vertical well without doing, not, without doing anything to it, and then you compare with the horizontal well, your area, of a reservoir contact on horizontal is 20 times of the vertical part. Now you put this horizontal into uh, into a uh, hydraulic fracturing because one fracturing is 270 times if you put it uh, vertical. So that's becoming uh, a map of 10 frags times 270. And wait, 270, so you have uh, 222 square foot when you compare horizontal frag with the vertical frag, 
no horizontal track with a vertical without doing anything is a thousand one hundred times a vertical example when you do a 10 multi-stage hardly factoring to the horizontal well and that's the motivation right you want to be you want to fail as much as can your reservoir okay so then the oil that uh, touch the the rock will flow into your well board statistic wise let me update everybody on the latest statistic on uh unconventional because it's been two three years here uh not so lots of uh, activities running around until uh, uh beginning of this year and suddenly the oil price is steady and good goodly for us which is more than 100 uh, us dollar per barrel and people start tracking again and they come back strong and this is the statistics statistic of unconventional if you look at this bar here this is the horizontal well the brown part and this is the the stages one stage of horizontal one stage of horizontal shell in us they now pump it up to 600,000 pounds of propane and the fluids required is 11,000 barrel right so one horizontal well this day consists of most uh in average 30 stages and 30 stages is a lot right and propane per stage as i mentioned before is 600,000 pounds and fluid is 11,000 barrel so the propane volume per well, which is 30 states times 600,000, if is maybe it's easier for you to uh, imagine, is one football field, and you fill eight and a half meter in height with the propane. So uh, one football field, you uh, put the wall into that football field, and then fill eight and a half meter of a height with the propane, right? Now, if you're surprised with that, don't be because the water volume that required for these 30 stages is actually one football field with the 96 meters in height. So you build another 100 meter of height and you fill it with water on that one football field. So lots of uh, propane and it's lots of water. It's a very massive uh, operation when you do the unconventional, okay? So look, look at this picture here, it's a uh, uh, famous pictures of a uh, slumberjack equipment. It's a very busy uh, operation in US. All these, uh, all these uh, trucks that I laser here is the pumps. And this is the sand container, the propane container. This is the blender, right? And this is the frag tank. Or maybe this is the frag tank. No, this is the frag tank. Yeah. It's a high pressure, uh, thousand of thousand PSI. It may be a 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 PSI at the surface. Imagine PSI, right? I mean, your tires, your car tires is uh, 25 PSI. And it can kill. Okay. Now imagine if you have 10,000 PSI, that one single tire you put. I don't know what uh, 10,000 divided by 25 times of uh, uh, pressure we're blown. Okay, so uh, it's a very dense, uh, dense and tense operation. Lots of truck running around, lots of people uh, 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 walking and uh, working, and they are all with a headset because it's uh, quite noisy as well. And it's a very, uh, when they start pumping, everybody's just, uh, they have to be concentrated on what the particular uh, unit or equipment or uh, a, a job task that they are doing. Because one single guy, one person uh, fail to do the job and it will ruin the whole uh, uh, big operation, big massive operation. And this is one of the most expensive uh, activities per time unit in uh, oil field. I mean, one job maybe cost like uh, one big job here. I uh, I expect that if it if the cost of uh, one state is 300,000 
uh, US dollar 300k, then 10 stages is uh, is already 3 million. Is uh, millions and millions of uh, operation, right? Dollar operation, especially for the for the uh, place that just started. We are not in the factory mode like in US. I mean, if you if you hear the uh, cost of uh, the uh, developing a horizontal well and put ten stages uh, track in US, maybe one will say, "Oh, yeah, we spent seven million, or maybe ten million uh, max." And you are a well with the ten track stages in there. Yeah, but they, as I as I said, one crew there finish like ten stages, nine stages in one day. We are not there yet. We but we have to start. You know, took them like uh, many years from two thousand seven until now. That's uh, maybe fifteen years to be in this uh, position, and they start doing the same thing like. Uh, and we actually benefit because maybe some of the stuff we can start uh, not like uh, the pain they have they have to go through, but we can uh, do it faster, right? But we just have to do it. Maybe it's not cheap at the beginning, right? But uh, if you don't do, you never know and you never success. This is the arrangement of uh, traps on location. There will be a frag tank to store the fluid. And most of the time, if it is shell operation, they usually dig a pit, a big pit. We have a sand container, pot blender, pumpers, a dirty pump, frag monitoring cabin, and treating line, right? The material itself, we have this, uh, when we pump the job, this is the conventional job. Okay, I just want to give a feeling what happened when you, you pump it, there will be a pumping a slurry rate there will be a red here. I'm not sure what happened with my with my laser. Anyway, uh, I think my laser is gone here. So uh, just go with my uh, with my uh, guys. Let me just take it out. Okay, so uh, just right. so we have this. Uh, go with my cursor here. There is. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. One minute. Let me, let me just fix this. Okay, so we have a blue one as a slurry rate. Okay, you start pumping your uh, fracturing. Uh, without propen at the beginning, okay? And the pressure on the red one is, uh, uh, in this case, is like 8,500 PSI. And then after you finish your uh, uh, pet state, then you start dropping your propen here, the, the uh, green one. You keep on uh, pumping your propen until finish, and then uh, you start plus. To clean up the well bore from the propen and in every stage you take the sample right so this is the pad for example is without propen without sand and continue with the high propen concentration is almost black in uh, in the cup or like all of them right okay so this is the propen the propen has to have a strength and the grain that will define what's the permeability against the pressure that it will experience right now i think uh, i'm really good here uh, almost uh, 45 minutes and i expect this is my last slide uh, where we at here on the unconventional on mnk on october 2022 so we did uh, not sumatra M field and C field, but it's not that very successful because uh, the young modulus is not as high as what we expect. The young modulus of uh, the particular rock in M field and C field is only half million psi. Then we go to Weka Rokan. Uh, we have G field and K field, right? And this is. Uh, very promising because the G field and K field is expected to have a modulus of 
PSI. It's almost close to the 3 million PSI Hayang modulus in the heinous field of uh, US. So what the Central Sumatra operator to do now is number one, coordination with US biggest shell operator. That will be the partner uh, uh, that have the technology, that have the uh, funding and has the experience developing this uh, shell. This guy here from the US, okay, you Google yourself, uh, producing uh, 900 barrel, 900,000 barrel oil per day equivalent, okay? So it's almost one and a half times of uh, Indonesia's production. With only less than 3,000 employees. Anyway, number two, what the operators should do on the Central Sumatra that on this uh, G field and K field, is to drill that uh, high pressure, high temperature vertical well. It's vertical well first, it's not horizontal, vertical first. We have to start from the vertical, right? It's like the guys in US do as well. Then we take the core and then we do triaxial test and also a complete logging. It's a fancy logging, right? We also need to test the premium compression and which is very expensive. And maybe we will find difficulties if the well that we will drill in the G field and K field is as high pressure and as hot as what we uh, think now. We are expecting that, hey, hopefully when we drill, though we prepare all the premium completion, right? For HPHD, but if later we found the pressure and the temperature is friendly enough, then it will solve uh, maybe 30%, 40% of the cost of this well. Yeah? Then we will do injection tests to analyze the reservoir properties and qualities and what we call the FIT. The FIT is special mini frag and you pump a small amount of fluid at maybe 10 barrel a minute and then you decline for maybe one week, five days to one week, okay? Then you review the frag potential together all the, because frag is uh, very complex in, uh, in the knowledge and domain. Uh, and also operations. So everybody, everybody has to sit together and then, hey, you guys with your domain, what do you think with what we have, what we just did? You, what do you think? So everybody uh, do their uh, homework and then come and then sit together and then define, is this go or no go, right? If it is go, then the future works well. We will start with horizontal, 4,500 feet lateral and 25 stages. The other thing that may be related to economic is that uh, since we will do a lots of propane, maybe it's a good idea. No, it's not maybe it's a good idea. I think it's a very good idea and I think it's a must do to do the sorts of, to do the sand mining ourselves. So we have to uh, find uh, around our area which area has the material that we can do the, we can make a propane out of it, um, mining ourselves and develop ourselves and then do it ourselves, right? And also water treatment, because we will do a 10, one football field, like the size of one football field with a 96 meters of uh, water, that's what we will pump to the, to the ground and also how to uh, accommodate the infrastructure to be able to pass all these uh, 20 tons to 25 tons uh, trucks with the road and the bridge and the village that we have now to go to the field, yeah. Let me just test, maybe I have, a, I think it's the end, all right. So that's the end of my presentation, uh, gentlemen, ladies. It's uh, 8 o'clock. I finish it in 45 minutes. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. And then I'll I give the stage again back to the Mario. Oh, Mario? Yes, Masiando. Thank you very much for the very, very solid, compact, and impactful presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mas and Mbak Semua, let's give a round of applause once again to Masiando. <laughs> okay, now, uh, before we going to start the Q&A session, uh, let me remind you all to download the virtual background because right after this, we're going to have a photo session. All right, okay. 
So once again, you can check um, the link in the chat room or chat box window, and then go to that, download the photo session, uh, the background, and use it for your virtual photo session. Because right after this, we're going to have a photo session. Okay, before we start. So Mas Yando, there's a lot of questions bringing up in our chat room. <laughs> Okay, there's uh, there is so many actually, and I guess this is going to take you a little bit while to discuss. Okay, so while waiting for everyone, and maybe everyone, if you already download the virtual background, uh, maybe you can turn off your turn on your camera, and we can take the photo photo together. Maybe there is a committee to help us in um, taking the pictures. Yes. yes, uh but Fanya, please help. Masiando, if you don't mind, can you please unshare the slide so we can see the whole participant? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, we will wait for everyone to turn yes. off their cameras. Let's give a little bit, a, a little bit more time for the yeah. other participants. Okay, sure. No, we have 10 questions on the queue, Masiando. <laughs> and um, just to remind everyone, if you still have questions and you want to ask directly, you can raise your hand. And um, we with the comedy is going to unmute you. So yeah, just raise your hand if you're feeling like speaking directly to Masiando. OK, if everyone is ready. Any more? Who needs to turn on their camera? Okay, I think it's enough, but Fanya, you can take a picture. Okay. Okay, everyone. Debbie? Ah, Mbak Debbie. Mbak Debbie hilang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please smile in three, two, one. Okay, this way. Okay. One more time. Smile in three, two, one. Okay, Marian, Mas Mario, is it enough? Yeah, I think I think we get it. Yeah, we have yeah. maybe the gallery is is uh, full house enough. <laughs> Thank you for everyone um, on uh, downloading the background and also use it in our photo session. So. Let's go to the um, Q&A session. Okay, so uh, there is no one raising hand. So I'm gonna start Masiando with the question from the chat box. So the first question from Mas Orpa Andre Sahetapi. All right. So thanks Masiando for insightful presentation. I would like to ask about the decision tree. If our server have a low perm, have and have very high asset solubility and hard to broke. In this case, I think it's very tough. For this case, which is the best stimulation, matrix or asset fracturing? Masiando, you want to take this question? Yeah, if it is, uh, if it is, uh, I try to remember if I ever have experience on experience on this uh, particular particular case. But if it is hard to broke. I was in uh, Aramco a long time ago. I deal with uh, what we call car formation. Car formation is very hard to break. So then the, usually the frac crew will go to a, it's a tight carbonate and the frac crew will go to location just to do the data frac only. If they can break the rock, then they will farm the proper fracturing. If they cannot break the rock, then they will lower acid and then do the acid fracturing. 
So if it is uh, reservoir is a low pump, then you don't do a matrix will not help you a lot. So uh, for me, you still have to go with the uh, acid fracturing, but put maybe put lots of uh, diversion, right? To uh, to help with the leak off because of a high acid solubility. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mas Yando. We hope this uh, answer your question, Mas Andre. And let's go to the next question. Or oh, there is uh, from Mas Franz or Pak Franz. Uh, there is actually four section of questions. So I'm gonna start one by one. Maybe Mas Yando. So the first one is how far affected water supply for injecting oil and gas. Um, I think this is uh, perhaps for the supply for the uh, water source, maybe for the fracturing, or maybe do you have I any? I think other so. Yeah. yeah, I think he's talking about the the drinking water and all this uh, stuff, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, is uh, this um, what do you, do you call it? Uh, surface water. Yeah, uh, a water at the uh, close to the surface, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, we uh, we used to. Uh, to uh, to have that water for uh, for living okay so how far affected water supply for injecting injecting oil and gas i'm not sure if i take this right but again the the oil the the frag that we we do is very far uh at the bottom of the on the ground right it's maybe three thousand feet a thousand feet in sumatra alone is it a thousand feet in the central sumatra in the north sumatra is ten thousand feet right and physically speaking, it is very hard for you to uh, break all the rocks above over 8,000 feet to reach the, the water table, okay, to reach the surface water, the, the drinking water, right? So uh, for me, uh, it is not affected. It's, it's hard to believe and uh, it's a debate. Of, uh, one proof, the other one uh, cannot prove. And for me, uh, you have to see uh, which one benefit the community more by doing hydraulic fracturing or or otherwise. Yeah. I think that's my uh, my answer for that. All right, uh, it is not. Thank you, Mas Yando. Okay, so let's moving on to the second section. What are the differences in detail between the hydrofracking used in geothermal system or EGS? With that, in enhanced oil or gas development. All right, in the hydro, uh, in the uh, in the geothermal, when you frack it, you actually you're not pumping propane. You're pumping uh, cold water, and because of the thermal shock, the cold water will crack all these very hot, you know, the 400 degree uh, uh, geothermal uh, reservoir, just like just like a glass, right? I mean, uh, you feel like a glass with the hot water uh, you 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 put a glass into a, a boil water and then suddenly you put the ice and then it will crack right right so uh, it's the same concept so uh, and other than that there is no fracture fluid because uh, to be able to pump propane you need viscosity and as of now uh, there is no fracture fluid that can sustain and maintain viscosity to carry the propane up to the geothermal temperature of the 400 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, mm. so again, to put it simple, what's the difference? Uh, in the geothermal, you uh, you base your uh, you stimulate your uh, geothermal rock with the thermal shock by pumping the very extreme uh, different temperature fluid uh, to the to the to the system. While in the oil and gas, you use a normal fluid. The water base or oil base and then pumping propane. That's it. All right, Masiando, thank you. And the third one is about the comparison between the liquid nitrogen and hydraulic fracturing. Which one is actually the best, the better? Or to do what? I mean, uh, if it is, if you do a nitrogen to, uh, let's say, unloading, if you mean you use a uh, nitrogen to unload your. Uh, your uh, fluid because of the low uh, reservoir uh, pressure. Uh, that's the and yeah, that's true. That's the uh, the purpose of having nitrogen because then you reduce the hydrostatic in the wellbore, so then your uh, fluid uh, coming up to the surface. 
but that doesn't solve the low permeability of what the reservoir has, right? Right. The permeability is still low permeability, still low permeability, and you have to improve it. So for me, it's not a direct comparison between liquid nitrogen and hydraulic fracturing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's going to address different problems, right, Miss? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. When the cracks keeps propagating within the reservoir formation, how exactly we define the fluid flow regime within the cracks? When the crack keeps propagating within the reservoir formation, how exactly to define the fluid flow regime within the cracks? All right, so right after, so when when you pump the job, your uh, your flow is is coming, your flow to the reservoir is not dictated by uh, the matrix permeability. It's coming with the pressure, the frag, the leak off, and the pressure. And whatever the control the leak off is three things. Number one is the formation of uh, viscosity. Number two is the uh, pressure. Number three is the uh, frag fluid that you pump. Okay. Now, right after the frag, when you stop produce the well, then it comes the flow regime. The very first one that you will see is the bilinear flow, because then there are two types of a flow, one to the a wall of the frag, the other one is the to the tips of the frag. So bilinear flow, and then after that it comes to as a linear flow, and one day it will come to the radial flow eventually. Yeah. So it started with the linear flow, a uh, bilinear flow, right. linear flow, and then after that the uh, uh, radial flow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And that is answering all the inquiries from uh, Mas atau Pak Franz. Okay, next question coming from uh, Mas Fadel Hisbullah. Typically, an acid frac is done in high perm reservoir. What about in low perm reservoir with high scale tendency? Can we also do acid frac with propane later? Or perhaps it is better to do, to do the propane frac first and do acid once the production decline occurs? What do you think, Masiando? All right. So look at this. Acid frac is done in high perm reservoir. It is not actually. So acid frac is done in low permeability reservoir, but have a high solubility, right? Because if it is high perm, then you you can just do the matrix treatment, right? And then you say that. So that is uh, I correct that statement. And then what about uh, in low perm reservoir with high scale tendency? Can we also do acid frag with propane later? Can we also do acid frag with the pro? Or you do the acid frag first, and then after that, propane. Or to do a propane first, and then do acid. All right. So, uh, well, you know, propane is an easy fix. You pump propane, then uh, you'll see uh, how's the production uh, behave after it. This mm -hmm. is my uh, suggestion. But if you have a good lab, you have time, you have a good lab, you have pour, you have cutting, you can test this, you can test that, you, you do XRD, you do, the, you do the CT scan and all good stuff. And then you do uh, lots of uh, comparison between uh, every single acid available in the industry. Then yes, you can do the acid. But acid, uh, again, if you have a complication, you really have to do a, a very good uh, lab test and lots of uh, cutting and pour will be involved. The easy fix is a proper fracturing. Then if you still have a problem and you're not satisfied with that, then you can try acid. Yeah, next. Okay, thank you. That's very concise and uh, probably helpful for Mas Fadel. Next question from Mas Oki Ramadan. Um, okay, so he's probably paying attention in the first slides related with the FCD. Based on Sinkole Samanlejo, uh, the plot, the optimum FCD is between 0.1 to 10. Meaning if above 10, are we wasting money probably because the design of the frag is not optimum? Well, you can say that, but uh, you can also say that, hey, um, um, your FCD is high, it can be a result of something else, right? It can mm -hmm. be a result of maybe your design uh, 
have a, a short half length because at the bottom of, of the equation is half length times on machine permeability, right? Right. So if it is your uh, FCD is too high, then something at the bottom there is low. It can be a very low permeability or as well, it can be a very short half length, right? And yes. if you go with the shell frag or a very tight permeability, anything zero point, anything below one, then it's very easy for you to get the high FCD. Yeah. So you have to look at if I answer your question. Yes, it is true. It you maybe you're wasting your money. Maybe you can reduce the size of your treatment. But again, you have to look at case by case. is different uh, between a low perm and high perm and try to look at the equation uh, more carefully. Okay. Yes, with the notes. Yes, all right. Thank you, Mas Yandok. Okay, next question from Pak or Stefanus Kurniadi. Pak Yando, in your opinion, which one more important in UC stimulation? FCD or SRV? SRV, I guess, stimulated reservoir volume? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So SRV. So, but again, we have to be careful with SRV as well because SRV is a shear fractures. It can be unpropped, right? You you measure what you know. You you have all this uh, a signal from the mother earth from the subsurface, which actually part of the uh, earth or points that felt the fractures that you just uh, pump, right? But that doesn't mean that point is probed, right? You have a signal, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, there is uh, somebody looking at you and then, uh, uh, and you think like, hmm, you know, there may be a track to me or something just because it's she or she looking at me. Doesn't have to, you know, she, she's, she or he looking at you, but that doesn't mean that he or she may be attracted to you. Right, so that's the SRP uh, concept. Mm. But if you ask me an unconventional, which one is more important? SRP is more important, but again, with the notes, that one is prop. That, that SRP is prop. Has okay. a prop in it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mas Yandu. And that's for answering Mas Stefanus Kurniadi's question. Okay, moving on to the next question from Leandro. Mas Leandro, Pak Leandro, I guess. The question is, does Indonesia plan reuse of hydraulic fracturing from future operation, for future operations, I guess, as the use of water being a very political issue, considering that some of the place in the USA already reuse a high percentage? Uh well i'm not sure if i uh, take this right but i think maybe uh, if we use the water uh, from one track and then to another well we use the same water i think that's maybe that's uh, the one right from mario mm -hmm. that's what i think reuse the hardly fracturing water for the future operation as the use of water being a, ve a, a very political issue considering that some of the play in the usa already reuse high percentage Yes, so actually that's what we call brackish water, brackish water, right? So brackish. you uh, you use this water, this 11,000 barrel of water to the first well, and then after that, the first well is flow back, and then you put it back to the pit, and then you use it, you treat it a little bit, clean it up, filter it, and then you use it again for the next uh, coming well, right? Mm. Maybe you lost 10%, 15%, but again, you add it up as you need, but again, you don't just... Uh, uh, collect 11,000 barrel fresh water for every well. So you have to uh, optimize until it's totally that the, the water that you use is totally uh, uh, unacceptable anymore by uh, by the lab. And then, then yes, you can cut it off and then uh, you uh, go with the new water. But yes, we have to use the same water as much as we can from one well to another well to track. That's what we call brackish water. Okay, so that's that's quite a new for me as well, Masiando. So yeah. we, talking about the um, the water quality that cannot be used, what is what what is um, it physically look like? Does it has maybe too thick or maybe I don't know. I, I, I never heard of it. Do you care to share your experience, Masiando? 
Yeah, it's a clean water. That's uh, water has to be clean, right? Mm -hmm. That's number one. You cannot have all this dirty water with the sand, with the mud, and everything. So it's water is a water. Yeah. So uh, water is clean. It's a filter, and then all the basics, uh, uh, lab requirement. Uh, what is the maximum iron, maximum calcium, and everything is there, and then the uh, the water uh, has uh, a normal water that has a normal friction pressure. If you use, uh, let's say, uh, hey, uh, you know, we are fracking in Middle East and we don't have uh, a lot of water, uh, maybe we can use uh, sea water, for example. Mm -hmm. Now you you use a sea water with lots of salt that will have you will have a very high friction, right? Okay. And at the same time, when you have a high friction, uh, you are pumping for the shale gas. You are you are depending your uh, uh, propane transport with a high rate because then you create turbulence by pumping a hundred barrel per minute. You not depend on viscosity, but you depend on turbulence uh, uh, coming from the high rate. Okay. So that's the water that you need to pump, and the water, of course, uh, uh, will be uh, uh, has no bacteria, smells good, smells good. Mean like she's not smells uh, the dirty rotans, and uh, and uh, you will put surfactant and uh, maybe a friction reducer into it. Okay. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you, Masayano, for. Yeah, that, that's lighting me up a little bit, and perhaps uh, many of people, or many of participants, are also coming here. So let's moving on to the next question from uh, I think it's Mbak, Mbak Fabiola Lady. Okay, the question is: In your perspective, can the production of one million barrels? Oh, this is an Indonesian target, I guess. Uh, can the tar can the production of one million barrels be supported by only develop and uh, develop conventional reservoir? Um, in the bracket, we can use fracturing to boost the production of conventional reservoir. Or Indonesia is in urgently need of unconventional reservoir. In this case, shell reservoir. What do you think, Sando? <laughs> oh, it's very hard to be politically correct here. But uh, again, you have you need a spirit, right? I mean, you have to uh, you need to have a spirit, and you have to uh, put. Uh, uh, your high hopes on it, right? So uh, for me, uh, Cepu is producing 160 uh, plus minus 160. Rokan is 160. That's already 350. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can have another 150 from Rokan, hopefully, or let's say 100. 100, yeah, 100. That's 400, 500. And then plus Metco, uh, Petronas, Maybe you are shy a little bit from a 1 million, but if you try hard with the fracturing and water flood, that's another thing. Uh, well, you are close to it, hopefully, but uh, but you need help. Unconventional will help, right? Yeah. And that is why uh, I am uh, I'm hoping for uh, everybody prayer here uh, for our field G and field K to be successful. That field G and field K will be drilled and tested April next year. So it's uh, another six months from now. Wait, October, November. Yeah, another six months from now. So uh, let's hope for the best. We have uh, we have a hopes. We have a good uh, sign of young modulus there. And if it is true and it's produced oil, it will help big times on our target, right? And again, guys, uh, uh, don't look at the 1 million. What we are looking at is how much we need. Right? We need one and a half a million, actually. So uh, try to be there. We'll try to be 1 million at least, but again, still. Uh, it's a long journey, but we, we have to make it. And frack is part of it. All right, thank you, Masiando. Yeah, it's a long journey, my lady. Maybe you can still in the spirit in pursuing one million battles. <laughs> okay, let's moving on to the next question. I think um, this is again from Leandro, Pak Leandro, Mr. Leandro. Uh, has been done a more comprehensive geomechanical study in place prospecting and evaluation. 
in the brackets, including additional parameters to just Young's modulus, state of stresses, brittleness, and fracability index, and so on. Yeah. Um, perhaps this is a continuation, I guess, or maybe the question. Yeah, there is. is yeah. So there is a, there is a study uh, done by uh, uh, previous operator. All right, and then also uh, of Rokan, and then also there is a study done by ITB, and as well by uh, uh, Lemigas. Okay, so has been done a more comprehensive study. There is, there's, uh, but again, uh, the core that we will have from field G and field K will be will be tested, not only geomechanical, uh, but also the core will be tested uh, in Lemigas and also in US. In USA, so uh, uh, it will be uh, it will complete the geomechanical studies with the actual uh, physical uh, result. All right, thank you, Mas Yandel. And next question from Mas Abraham Ryan. Pak Yandel, thank you for the great presentation. From all the opportunity we have in Indonesia, from which formation would you suggest we need to start? Okay, that's an interesting one. Uh, maybe not the not only the shell, right? Okay, mm -hmm. we talk about shell already. Uh, we will be there. We are trying to be there uh, smoothly. But again, to start with, we have Talisa. It's a huge Talisa potential in Sumatra. Yeah. We have Talisa equivalent, which is Gumai formation, and it's a huge uh, as well potential. And we have Talang Akar. Talang Akar in some area is defined as a tight sand, but many talangkar has a good young modulus of anything above 2 million psi so down at the bottom of sumatra there is talangkar and goes to java as well up to cirebon right yeah so there is talangkar formation It's a tight sandstone very tight sandstone it's a candidate to crack it's a good uh, uh, brittleness it's, it's, it's a, a good young modulus sorry it's a good young modulus above talangkar there is uh, uh, batu raja batu raja is a carbonate formation right and in some area react very good with the acid track. Right now above the Batu Raja and also uh, many Batu Raja has a good young, uh, young modulus and poison ratio. Above Batu Raja, there is Talisa, yeah, the one that I just mentioned. So we have Tala Akar in many areas. We have uh, Batu Raja and we have uh, uh, Talisa. Move to Java. Java has uh, some uh, uh, I'm not sure what's the formation name, I forget, but uh, it's a very tight, very deep uh, HPHD. And again, it's a good uh, good uh, candidate for fracturing, though you need some efforts to uh, mitigate the, the difficulties. Okay, Kalimantan has uh, this and that uh, potential, uh, especially some exploration uh, works. They just studied on the uh, PHSS, right? That's one. That's Pertamina. Medco. Uh, Medco has uh, uh, many tight acid formation that is a good candidate to, uh, for acid frag. And some already uh, produce very nicely uh, after the simulation uh, acid frag job. Uh, also, they have like uh, Pertamina, they have Telisa as well on, in the uh, Kaji and Smoga and it's published in SPE paper. You can uh, go to the SPE pa paper and then learn uh, the Medco's uh, Telisa. And as well, uh, what else? Uh, Petronas, yeah, Petronas is there. And some area in the east, which is not uh, touched yet. Yeah. So, if your question to start with, start with Talang Akar, Batu Raja, and uh, Telisa yes, in Sumatra and Java. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Very, very enlightening, Mas Yando. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Um, dear Mas Yando, there is an advanced technology of fracturing called multi stage fracturing. Okay. For horizontal well, I guess, which can be applied in the horizontal well. My question is. What is the fault of the production increase and when should we avoid using multi-stage fracturing? Thank you for your presentation. From Mas Sindhu. What do you think, Mas right. Yeah, Sindhu, so the fault of production, if you go with the FCD, you can see that there is an equation following the 
that uh, Sinkole Samaniego. So calculation based on the pseudo wellbore radius, that pseudo wellbore radius is actually coming from the half length that you just put, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the fault of increase, to put it simple, the fault of increase of hypermeability usually two to three times. And the fault of increase of a very low permeability, it may be 10 times and above. So for example, uh, a good permeability producing a thousand and you frack it, produce production goes, as I said, two times from a thousand becoming 2000, 2000. right? Mm -hmm. A low permeability produce 100. After the frack, it's 10 times fold of increase. So from a hundred to a thousand, you do the math. The first one, the high perm, although it's only two times, but give you a thousand barrel. The second one, low perm, although it's 10 times, also give you a, a thousand barrel, right? So right. don't be fooled with the fault of increase. But again, good reservoir, high perm and low perm is a candidate for fracturing. Okay. And then what is uh, the next one? When, when should, should we, we avoid using the multi -state, MSF? Yeah, mm -hmm. multi-state fracturing. So uh, the in us there is a uh, there is a rules that if i'm not mistaken the frac half length or the horizontal section cannot be more than 80 percent of the uh, uh acres the drainage uh, radius right so uh, that is one and then when do you want to do a, a horizontal if if you have a very geologically complex situation that uh, your uh, horizontal may be a past that uh, faults mm -hmm. or uh, any geological uh, events, then it may be a challenge for you to do to do so. Yeah. So, or maybe a very thin layer. Very thin layer, then it's very hard for you to maintain that your horizontal section will be still in that layer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Masiando. There is a um, no three points in avoiding the multi stage fracturing for Masindu. Okay, so the light, the last question, I guess, this is from Mas Randy. Uh, the question is: Frac growth in the reservoir is mostly uncontrollable. We have a we have uncontrolled high growth or the frac orientation going under the formation target. Do you have any suggestion on operational frac to control the fracturing growth? more focus, focus on the formation target. If we add some steps to control the frac growth, there is a negative impact on these adding steps, like fluid production or maybe else. What do you think, Masyando? All right, so understanding of the stress profile is your first key to, uh, to, to uh, protect your uh, high growth to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. So you need to do a sonic scanner or a DSI, son a uh, 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 log so then you know what's the stress contrast between your cell and your uh, sand or your net bay let's say your uh, barrier is uh, has a closer pressure of 3000 right mm -hmm. and then your uh, contact your net bay closer pressure of 2000 so the stress contrast between your barrier and your uh, net bay is 3000 psi minus 2000 psi you have a thousand psi right right when you have a thousand psi, when you understand that you have a thousand psi, then you can design your frac job to have a net pressure less than a thousand psi. If your frac pressure is less than a thousand psi, you will stay. You will still stay in your net pay. You will not mm -hmm. have a high growth. Okay? Right. So understanding your stress is very important. Number two, uh, action. There is a steps that you can do to uh, minimize the uh, uncontrolled high growth. Number one is maybe reduce the size of your treatment then yes mm -hmm. you're right on your last statement it will impact your production right right then number two you use some materials maybe make materials like what the uh, called junk frag so junk frag is combination of three propen size and that will help to add a layer to the bottom and to the top maybe 10 percent of uh, additional stress and that will help your uh, uh, frag uh, uncontrolled high growth. Number three is you use a thinner fluid. Uh, uh, instead of pumping cross link of 700 centipoise, maybe you can have uh, uh, some fluid with the latest technology that uh, only have maybe 40 or 50 centipoise, 10% of the what, uh, what the traditional uh, frac fluid is. 
now having a less physical split then of course it's a less tendency for you to uh, uh to go uh, to break the the zone yeah okay all right all right so i think that's a very three uh uh three very important steps uh, that maybe we can use also in our in our uh Feel. Thank you very much, yeah. Masiando. So I guess there is a. Uh, I think that's already all the questions we have in the. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's also some question more, from. Gifari, Mas or Mbak Gifari, I guess. Uh, thank you, Masiando, yeah. for great presentation. Let me ask some question. Uh, I think that's actually two. Okay, the first one is after we do the slurry stage, which is injecting the propan, what is the estimated time for the propan to lose from the formation and make the fracture close? What do you think, Masendo? Well, you know, uh, that's what we call closer uh, pressure, right? And uh, right after you finish your uh, pumping, uh, when you are pumping, the frack still open, but the moment you finish your pumping, at some point, the frag will close. In the very uh, in the normal situation, it's less than half an hour or one hour, right? But in right. the very tight formation, like shell, it may be a couple hours or a couple days. So uh, at that time, you need help. How do you do it? You actually do a force closer. You uh, open the choke, uh, relieve the pressure in the wellbore, and uh, <laughs> and the uh, and uh, force the reservoir to close yeah so yeah it takes it can take uh, minutes or hours or a days but you can do something about it yeah usually we can see the indication during our mini frags right mas yeah yeah okay and the second question is uh, talking about the giant resources of unconventional hydrocarbon in indonesia what are your suggestions and advice, real, especially to university in Indonesia, to support its further development? Wow! Wow! That's, cool. that's uh, yeah, it's a uh, outstanding question, I believe. So uh, yes, so uh, first of all, we need to have some like we need to start to have uh, some lectures on the on the in the, in the university for our students to uh, again learn more about fracturing and uh, the what they what they call it when they have to go to the industry in the middle of internship uh, yeah internship yeah, yeah. so uh, yes uh, they need to uh, they need to connect to the industry and then have all these students to go to internships more and more into the fracturing right i mean it will be interesting for the students to uh, to come and also uh, we will benefit uh, more that all the fresh graduate all the yeah. fresh graduate will uh, will have the foundation to start their new job i like the question though yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay so th yeah that, that's actually a good one a vision one maybe perhaps in the upcoming future there is going to be a lot of cooperation between the university and also the oil and gas um uh company in indonesia so yeah. the last question i guess mas Yando, uh this is from mas aulia bimo okay dear mr Yando, thank you for your great presentation is there any different propan type uh in bracket size of uh, size or material that we will use for uc fracturing in indonesia phil all right so you will use uh, very uh it's a good and uh, uh, integrating question because all the propane that we are using today is coming from abroad, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we need, if we do this uh, uh, millions and millions barrel, uh, millions and millions pounds of propane, we need to have this propane develop and made and uh, produced from our within in, in, in the country, right? Mm -hmm. uh, logistic wise to bring it from abroad is it will be uh, uh undreamable so for me you need to have this industry to be studied soon that's number one number two uh any different propane size the smallest one what we call a hundred mass so a hundred mass or maybe maximum 40 70 is the one that you can use for the uh, unconventional 
okay okay so i think that's all mas yando for all the questions alhamdulillah <laughs> <laughs> Capek maraton mas. <laughs> It's okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mas Yando, for all your answers in all the maybe I think it's around 15 questions that we have. We 15 with so many sub questions. And once again, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mas Enba, let's give a round of applause to Mas Ariando Makmun. Thank you very much, all Mas right. Yando. Thank you, everybody. Okay, and now uh, before we give it back to the uh, comedy, so we already have the um, door prize winner. Okay, so oh. there is a, a plenty of people who are um, evaluating all the questions and then what is the impact between or behind the questions. And we have three winners already. So let's have the round drum roll. <laughs> okay. Um, with the, without a particular order. So we have uh, three winners here. The first one or uh, without the order. The first one is uh, Mr. or Mas Leandro. Okay. There is a two uh, questions right. with the water quality. And then the second one is Mas Andre. Okay, the first, the very first question, and then the last one is Gifari. Okay, so this is the like the last question. Yeah, the one with related with the visionary questions. Okay. <laughs> How we should be developing our uh, competencies. Yeah, the younger generation is our future. Okay, um, with that, I think uh, that is enclose our um, presentation session for today. Once again, thank you very much for Masiando for all the knowledge and experience you share to us. And My thank pleasure. you for everyone. Thank you for everyone in giving the participation and discussions during the uh, Q&A sessions for today. And um, I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity from the committee and I'll give it back to Mbak Dian. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Oh, Okay, thank you very much, Mas Yando and Mas Mario, Mas May. Um, a very uh, loud round of applause, yeah, for both of you. <laughs> Um, so uh, I would like to ask, uh, request Mas Medi to provide uh, both of you with the token of appreciation. Okay, thank you, Mas Median. Thank you, Mas Yando. I think it's very interesting presentation. I mean, people can, I think, to see the potential of Indonesia getting more unconventional is actually we still have get good potential on it and I hope in the future with the expertise of Masyando, the I mean the unconventional in Indonesia would be coming more and more very important part contributing to the national production Masyando. with this one it is I would like to give you certificate of appreciation uh, thank you for your cooperation with the SPE Java Indonesia section thank you Uh, let's continue this collaboration, Masendo Lateron. Perhaps you can uh, get another round of the, your technical expertise sharing here, Lateron. Thank you once again. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, Mbak um, Fanya, can you please document first? Uh, Masendo, can you please uh, turn on your camera for documentation? Thank you. Ini Masendo, Mas Medi. Please smile in three, two, one. Okay. All right, thank you. So next from us, Mario, as me. Mas Medi, you're on you're still muted. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Mas Mario, thank you. Uh, for your time, also I mean, uh, a really good, uh, interesting moderator. I mean, it become uh, the topic is interesting, and the moderator make it more interesting. I think thank you for that. 
and would like to give you your certificate of appreciation from the SBE Java International Section. Thank you, Ms. Maria. Okay, Thank documentation you, first, please. Maria, three, two, one. Uh, okay, one more time. Okay, sorry, sorry. Please smile in three, two, one. Okay, Mbak Dian. Okay, thank you. Mas Mario, you want to say something? Well, I think this is a very amazing opportunity for me as well. And I've been facilitating enough and I'm, I'm really honored to be involved in this event. Thank you very much, Mas Medi, uh, Mbak Dian, and all the committee. The pleasure is ours. And for the participants, members who wanted to, you know, uh, participate as a moderator or a speaker, please, contact us uh, and we'll, we'll uh, provide you with the venue, right? <laughs> so um, this is the end of uh, our technical discussion group. Uh, thank you very much again, Mas Yando, uh, Mas Mario for your participation and also Mbak Debi for organizing uh, together with us uh, on all the topics, yeah. Um, so, Please provide us with your feedbacks in the uh, link here, bit.ly SPETDG3 evaluation, or you can scan this, um, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? QR code. Yes. <laughs> scan the QR code, yeah. So provide us feedback if you wanted to receive certificates, but otherwise you still can also provide feedback, uh, even if you don't want. Um, and as I mentioned before, this is the first session. We have uh, another two, two, you know, two more sessions on the fracturing topics. So the first session later, uh, the number 40G will be presented by Mas Tunggal Purwoko, uh, which uh, will speak about low quality reservoir fracturing, uh, moderated by Mas Mario Hadinata. Um, and then the last session, the third session, will be presented by ba Debbie Halinda, who will present about fracturing in deeper HPHT wells. And this session will be moderated by Mas Mirza Azhari. All right. So don't miss these sessions uh, regarding fact fracturing, still in the fracturing topics. Uh, if you would like to, you know, uh, get updated on our future events, please stay tuned in our social media. Uh, and, you know, if you have membership or if you haven't have a membership in SPE, uh, you can renew or register yourself in this link. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for all the participation. Uh, we look forward for your future uh, contribution. Thank you very much uh, and good evening. For the, just a reminder for the winners of the door prize, please uh, stay behind to uh, get your contacts to Mbak Fanya. Yeah? Thank you very much. Terima kasih semua. Terima kasih. Bye -bye. Terima kasih. Waalaikumsalam. Terima kasih.